Castle Test Match at Sahara Park Newlands, South Africa versus the West Indies. Chris Gale at the crease along with Shiv Narayan Chanderpaul, their partnership worth just three, so in its infancy. And a day ahead, that could be very, very interesting. Many possibilities, but the probabilities is probably what we will talk about. Jeffrey Dujon's alongside me, Jeff. This man has to play well. He certainly does. Uh, hampered by that hamstring. Let's see. Let's see, he has a runner. Ronaka Morton will do that job. Uh, the West Indies well and truly under the pump now. South Africa have really bowled extremely well in, this, in their second innings. They've put pressure on, on and kept the pressure on the West Indian batsmen. Picked up four wickets. The majority of the batting this partnership uh, just Dwayne Bravo to come this partnership will be crucial if the West Indies want to extend this game and give themselves a chance to save it or to win it but right now they're not in a good position they're starting from scratch very little ammunition left it's up to this partnership to decide what happens from here on in here's the start of day four Yeah, it's it's starting from scratch really with with just six wickets in hand I say six wickets it's not really six is it but and I, I say with all due respect it's gone for four and shots like that I think he'd be in better position to play as well Is one of the few deliveries that Andre Nell has bowled offline. Got the thigh pad, no bat on that. Wicket apiece, one for Nell and Teeny, Stain and Callis. Harris into the attack now from the Weinberg end. Bowled a couple of overs yesterday. Oh, down the wicket and over the top, one bounce four. So immediate aggression from Bravo. It's an interesting shot, first ball of a spell. away nicely by Chanderpaul had lots of time to play that shot and sweet timing as well it's one of the best areas to score on this pitch anything short then you can pull or cut and you'll get four for it where most of the other front foot drives back foot drives most of them go for a couple so you can get any of the cross back shots just use the pace of the ball for runs Out, out, out. Just bounced on him, was looking to leave it in the end, was Bravo. I don't know what it hit or what it was just clever bowling across the seam, but it just lifted a little, not too quickly. And I think he was so surprised he just couldn't get out of the way. Looks like it might have run off the face. Bounce yeah, off the glove. Punched it to Smith and slip. Now the tail comes in. And the lead is nearly enough. So uh, another wicket for Nell. Bravo goes for 12. West Indies 126 now for five. I bet Nell's not giving up to come off. He averages about 9.8, doesn't he, in test cricket with the butt. He's on a king pair too. First baller in the first innings. 
You wouldn't take your cap and sweater off to have a go at him, would you? Missile. Let ball go through the top. Well, it bounced a little bit, but he just didn't get his hands out of the way quick enough. I mean, if you're going to leave it, you, you've got to get them out of the way. Yes. Yeah! And that's out. This time it does carry. Hashim Amla takes a good catch at short leg. And uh, Harris is struck. Harris picks up his first one. No real turn for Harris, but a little bit of extra bounce. Lewis pushes forward at this one, comes hard at the ball off the inside edge, and uh, good catch there by Hashim Amla at short leg. So West Indies now in all sorts of trouble. Six wickets down, 133. And a lead of 55. It's all looking very good for South Africa to even up this series. So one nil down after losing the... First test match. Taylor coming to the wicket now with his side in desperate trouble. Yeah, how does Jerome Taylor make all of this? That's a big, big blade he's got there. Disbelief. Russell Tiffin, he doesn't want anything to do with that. It was a terrific delivery. It came in through the air and just moved away off the seam. So, well, for a tail ender, it was going to be too good for him. It was also, would have been too good for a lot of top order batsmen. It came in, bounced, and moved away off the seam. So it was a wonderful delivery. Let's have a look if we can see whether there was an outside edge or not. It hit the hip just touched on the way through so it looks like on the surface if it was a great decision that would have been out now that's a genuine edge and not a difficult catch at all and he doesn't drop them often no slip catch is easy but as far as slip catches go this one was comfortable Graham Smith normally catches pretty well. He made a meal of this one. I wonder if he was still thinking about the previous delivery. That's off the outside edge, straight to Graham Smith. Didn't go in properly, and disappointment there for the South African captain. Absolute peach of a delivery. Chanapal's ready. He's got all his stuff on, and Harris now to Taylor. Smash. Will it carry? Yes, it does. Good hit from Jerome Taylor. Beats the man back on the boundary. Paul Harris giving this one some air, but uh, Jerome Taylor hit it well. Connected beautifully. His timing was excellent. Harris tossing it up. Swinging through the line there, over mid on. The moment he hit it, you knew it was gone. Into the crowd. Well, you said it, Kepler, earlier on. You need the man at the other end to be a bit more aggressive. Well, Stain has got an injury. He also uh, bowled within himself, but he bowled pretty well. Paul Harris also doing a good job, Jack Cullis. So it's been a good performance by the bowling attack. Great line. What pulled away? Wow, that's a good shot. Did so early, there's no mug with a bat. And he'll keep playing the shots. He's doing the right thing. He's trying to play an aggressive innings. 
hit a beautiful six the over before and this was a good hook shot wasn't that short but uh, Taylor was into position quickly and here come some runs four of them looks like seem to have been signal off the bat that's the end of the 76th over it's 161 for six out caught by Carles this time well bowled stain Taylor goes and a little breakthrough before the new ball well Taylor almost doesn't want to go was he trying to leave this We'll have a look just now, but Callis, well, you could almost say he doesn't drop them. So the bat just was just, yeah, he was trying to leave it and gets the outside edge, and Callis doesn't make a mistake. So uh, just the breakthrough South Africa wanted after lunch. So Jerem Taylor has hung in there nicely for 21. It's 163 for seven. We are hearing that the news on Chris Gale is that he has fractured his thumb and will bat if necessary. Now, when you say if necessary, that's if he can make a real contribution and hopefully save the game. There's no point in him going out there, just take another whack on the thumb. Otherwise, he'd be walking out there now. I think Dale Stang might be a little eager just to crank things up a bit here. Softly spoken. Oh, well. There has been a few niggles and a few words being uh, spoken. Here's that again. He's trying to leave it. Doesn't get his bat out the road. And uh, unfortunately gets... Uh, gets himself caught at second slip and I've got to say it's taken him an age to get off throw that one in the crowd it's in the practice bag isn't it <laughs> right extra slip surely Field is changing. He's got like uh, three slips and a fifth slip, if you like, as a gully. Backward point. A little bit of swing. <laughs> I didn't see a ball go down straight the whole day. <laughs> it went sideways. Ouch. That's going to hurt. 81 gone. It's 167 for seven. That has just hit flesh flush. Hit the elbow. Is it the elbow that he's hit here? He's. Yay. Oh, point of the elbow. Point of the elbow. There'll be quite a delay here. Whack. Slightly glancing. Out. Smith hangs on to it this time. Another wicket for Stain with a sore leg. He's limping a little bit after that ball. What a good performance this is from Young Dale. Brilliant. And a great line. That's a great line to any top class batter. Just a little bit fuller this time from off stump it started. He didn't even go hard at the ball and Smith hangs on to it this, this time. So uh, South Africa are uh, cleaning up with this new ball. It's gone for one, Darren Powell. It's 167 for eight. I've never known a test match involves so many runners. There's another one coming in with the 
Fidel Edwards. He's got a pulled hamstring. 167 for eight it is. Effectively, that might be nine. It, they did say that Chris Gale would bat if necessary. Well, um, that necessity has already gone by, I think. Unless these two can put on 100, then he might wander in. But we'll see what happens. To take you through the next half hour, Jeff Boycotts with Pom and Bangla. Thank you, Jackers. must say that coming in today, many predicted that the day would not quite be seen out. And that because of the brittle nature of the West Indies lineup, the key men were identified. Chris Gale was one of those. And after his injury, it really just opened up an end. Dale Stain. Three wickets. Despite the injury, he's got the ball pitched up, he's got it to swing. Here he goes at Edwards. Misdirected. I look at the wicket that went down. It was Darren Powell. I caught Graham Smith. On the stumps, does just a little bit, opens him up. And a, a simple catch. Pretty much the same as the one he dropped. No way he is going to put that down. Made absolutely sure. He's got bat on it. And got a couple. Can be frustrating bowling to the tail. When you're wired and you're outside the off stump. Can't get a bat on it as soon as you go straight. The bat just comes down. Also got to have a certain measure of patience in doing it. I think patience is the key. You've got to keep your cool. You, know, you think that you see somebody who is a poor player, a poor batsman, you think, oh, I should bowl him out in two or three balls. And you just uh, do the sensible things and wait. Just the patience. Just matter he isn't going anywhere. Nothing's happening. Oh, he's hit that. What a shot. What a good smack that is. Oh, oh, six. Wow, Fidel, what a shot. 178 for eight. That's a fantastic hit. Takes the lead to three figures. Have a look at this. Clear the front leg. Watching it. He's watching it. Bang. Always going up. One for Cullis. One for 33. He's bowled 18 overs. 3 for 30 for Stain, 2 for 27. Nellan Dini bowled fantastically. Uh, quite a lot of bounce here with the new ball straight over the stumps. A lot of carry there, the ball's hard and shiny. Wouldn't be too easy to hit for batsmen, I'll tell you at the moment. It's shaping away and bouncing and zipping through. Nicely directed. Bit of a mix-up. Oh, he's hit the stumps, Andre Nell. It'll be close. But it looks the runner may have got in. He's not sure. Not sure at all. Yeah, there was a slight stutter there because, <laughs> you know, with the runner. But you got the impression that he might well have made it. See, there he is. Yep, I think he's in. The dive paid off. That's confirmation. No doubt in that. Oh, he won't catch that. 
And that should make its way down to the boundary. Fidel Edwards again picking one he could handle and gets himself four runs. I think the field will split here. The Fidel Edwards says no real pace from Antini. I'll come back to your point in a minute about the two ends. Bat just turns in the hand. The third slip now comes out and um, Dale Stain will drop sort of uh, three quarters away back to the uh, long on boundary. Well, that's well hit. Fidel Edwards. Was pitched up, didn't hesitate. There's no one out there. And it's four more. These runs all help. That's uh, not a bad hit, that from Fidel Edwards. <laughs> well, I suppose it's, uh, yeah, it's a typical tail ender's slog. But it's working. It's in the air. And a brilliant catch from Paul Harris. The last man you'd expect to be that athletic. Paul Harris runs that one down and pulls it in. Yeah, that is a real, real ripper of a catch that just manages to get the toe of the bat, goes up, and I promise you I thought it was going to fall safe, but oh, look at that. Great catch, running away from him, that ball always going away from him, the hand goes up. And the frustration for South Africa is over, or is it? Fidel Edwards goes for 21. And West End is 192 for 9. Chris Gale comes to the wicket. West End is lead by 114 runs. Got a fractured thumb on, on his left hand. The West Indies lead is just 114. And he's decided that he needs to come to see how much better he can make that look. Well, he won't be feeling that thumb, that's for sure. That's been deadened by a couple of injections. And he's going to worry about his uh, hamstring, but he's going to be camping next to the square leg umpire for a while. Because uh, he's got... Uh, the same runner that was there for Fidel Edwards is uh, out there. Now then. They've got the best two batters in the West Indian team out there. And that's going to go for four. We're welcome four. Another good delivery from Andre Nell. Got Shipner and Chandra Paul. This is the dismissal of Fidel Edwards now look at that catch and it looked to me like the ball with the hand the hand with the ball in it watch what happens now is that a catch Typical, typical Chris Gale. He just stood and delivered. Straight through mid on. Gets off, well, not gets off the mark. He was off the mark before, but he's, that's his first delivery, and that's his response. Tell you what, there's not a lot of players in the world that can play that shot. He just, yes, it was a fraction short, but my goodness, that's just pure power. It's going to come round the wicket. He's going to play shots, that's for sure. Now, what Ntini can't afford to do here is bowl too short because he'll be hanging. That's Chris Gale, and he will punish him because there's not enough pace for Ntini at the moment. He's got to get it a little bit fuller, just back of a length. Smashed. He gets himself a single. Paul Harris, uh, there's a question as to whether he completed that catch cleanly. And we're going to have another look. 
There we go. Watch the left hand. Watch the left hand, folks. Is that ball pressed into the ground? I reckon so. Yeah, you're right. Oh, that's just beautifully played. That's all timing. All timing from Chris Gale. Was up in the slot and he just flicked it away. There's a man at deep back with square leg. Didn't have a chance. That's a great shot, really. This time he stands a little bit still and uh, just a pace. That's all he needed to get bat and ball. Flicks it round. Great batting. Uh, Darch has run down to Nell and South Africa could potentially just lose the plot here a little bit because Nell just basic length now maybe a slow ball it's in the air there's a man on pop will he get to it no he won't four more to Chris Gill I tell you what dude I, I, that is again we saw him in the first innings uh, slap one off now for six square over there and that cleared the boundary I, I could have sworn he has mis hit this and it's almost carried all the way look at that look where it bounced just inside that's unbelievable there's no question that he wanted to hit this out of the ground Chris Gale we got a little bit too much elevation on it didn't connect like he wanted to but it was enough really basically signal his intentions he's hit that and that is out of here <laughs> that's unbelievable that the crowd appreciates it that is in the middle of the bat and it's in the crowd on the embankment in front of square by miles slap Incoming, not even on the bank. It's <laughs> it's that in final squares on the seats. Crowd killer. Yeah. That uh, takes Chandapur to his 45th Test 50, and more importantly. Uh, he scored now an innings of 50 plus in seven consecutive test matches. 2.22 for nine. Side edge to run away for four. He's got three wickets, Andre Nell, but it's been a frustrating day for him. Well, he reckons if it's going to hurt, I just will hit it for four. It's hurting me blocking it. So let's make the pain worthwhile. Doesn't quite get all of that. He's hitting with the spin, though. That's, <laughs> that's fooled the batsman. Beautiful bowling. But it's also done Boucher. And four buys. Four more valuable runs. 167 the lead. Beautifully struck by Chanderpaul, and it's gone all the way. No need to verify by camera. Yeah, it was a signal also from Sean Pollock, who further away from it this time. That was a really good strike. 250 up. What a magnificent shot again. Oh, 
Well, they're both slightly short to him, and he stands up and hits it. It's a free swing of the bat. He's looking for it. He's stood back waiting. It's not the first time he's done this. And they should have seen by now. You know, the pull and the cut we've talked about are the, actually the easiest shots on this pitch because the ball sits up. So, if anything, you're better over-pitching than under-pitching. Well, that's daft. That's absolutely daft bowling and further into the outer. This is how he plays and this is why he's so dangerous. Yes, he does play silly shots early on. He'll get himself out, flashy drive. But when he gets in, he can clobber some of the best and the scoreboard ticks round very fast. And now, because of him, they've lost control of the game of South Africa. It's running away from them. hit that is it out is it out it is finally what did I say about pitching it up it's much harder to hit it out of the park if you pitch it up and they have to hit off the front foot on this pitch than it is if it's short and I suspect that besides the amount of joy there for the South African team there's quite a lot of relief well there would be things are getting out of control this is Dale Stain Bowling a normal delivery on this occasion, but pitching it up, as Jeff Boycott said, and Chris Gale just didn't get hold of this one as well as he did and some of those other powerful blows that he struck. Harris completes the catch. So South Africa chasing 185. It's more than they would have liked to have chased, but uh, history on their side. The smallest total defended here was 244. So Gale has gone for 38. End of the West Indian innings, 262 all out. There's a look at that scorecard. Chandapal again batted uh, magnificently. Not a bad start this time. Ganga and Random got the innings away and then Chris Gale towards the end. Superb. So West Indies have put themselves back in the game. South Africa bowled well at times. Not so well towards the end, but uh, Dalstein picks up four wickets. Andre Nil picks up three. The remaining wickets shared amongst the bowlers. So South Africa need 185 to win it's bound to be an interesting afternoon Avi de has been promoted to the top of the order now with uh, Neil McKenzie who's out injured no stranger to the opening role Avi de Villiers. in fact he's got a better record opening the batting than he has batting lower down the order and with him is uh, Graham Smith who's been short of runs he'd dearly love to make a big contribution and lead his team to victory He saw first in his power, oh, that's a bit of a poor effort. If you can't get down with your hand, stick your boot there, do a bit of football, but stop the four, whatever you do. Powell's the one that bowled a little short. Every now and again, he'd give you a short ball, and I've been saying all along, I think this is the easiest ball to hit. Not if it gets too high above your head, but when they're trying to bowl length and they just drag it down a bit, then I think you've got to latch on to that. Shot. Nice full delivery, but it put away neatly, nice and crisply. This is good for South Africa, not good for West Indies. The runs come in a little too quickly. The length is wrong. And this was Powell's problem first innings. He was too expensive, far more expensive than any other bowlers. A lot of effort, quite a nice pace, but at the same time, if you don't get the ball in the right area, people are going to take advantage because it's a low scoring game they've got to latch on to anything they can he's done uh, pretty well in the opening role he averages 38 David de Villiers likes the ball coming on that's a poor delivery and well struck three overs gone good start for South Africa 23 without loss now So the West Indian coach John Dyson will be disappointed with this start. West Indies have erred in line, they've erred in length and they're paying the price.
Oh, see, just short of a length. Just short of the short of a length you want. Not deliberately bowling that short, isn't Taylor? Like uh, his colleague, isn't at the other end. But if they just drop it a little, then batsmen are going to latch on to him. These cross-back shots you can hit for four, where once you drive it off the front foot, it's not so easy on this poor outfield. Oh, silly shot. Silly shot. What an extraordinary stupid shot that he's got away with. One knee, slash. 32 for none. Put him down. Just seemed to lose his balance at the critical stage. It's the Iceman. Marlon Samuels. Well, you got to take these. In these circumstances, everything that comes has to be taken. You got there, Marlon Samuels. And it just popped out. It's a good stroke. I'm going to have to run for that. Genuine half volley and put away beautifully by Smith. Well, it was on a good line. The length was wanting. Smith really pounced on this. Too full. He got a lot of bat on that. Now, the South African opening batsmen have shown a little bit of aggression. Going about things in a slightly different way, and the disciplines are lost amongst the West Indian bowlers as well. Well, they're not quite sure where to bowl. The way. Four more. He's pulled the ball well in this innings, Graham Smith, up to now. Got him. Out. Sorry, I was... Ah, oh, you're quite right. I, I was looking over his head. That's a wonderful catch. Wonderful catch. So the short ball is successful. At last. Well, he showed a willingness to go for everything, A.B. de Villiers. This was short. And just picked out the man at mid-wicket. Good catch from Darren Sammy. So A.B. de Villiers goes for 23. South Africa lose their first wicket. It's 57 for one. Ashim Amla. South Africa's number three batsman. 128 more runs required to win. Nine wickets in hand. One injured batsman in McKenzie. Shot again and pulled away again. He's really been very savage on anything short, Graham Smith. He's had so much time. Everything is going in front of square. Didn't even bother to get on the back foot there. It's not that much pace in the middle of this wicket. Another short ball, and four more. That with a lot of power from uh, where he fetched it, and how straight it's gone. I mean, that's gone through a straight mid-wicket position. He had a lot of time again. Tugged it from just a round off stump. And that'll be four more. Over pitch misdirected. Fine leg had no chance. Yeah. That takes him to his 19th Test 50 to go along with 1200s. Five of those hundreds against the West Indies.
And his second 50 against the West Indies, which indicates when he gets to 50, he converts it. 77 for one. Gone very fine that. So no chance for the man at long leg. Four more runs. Their leg buys, but they all count. It's gone through shouts of catch. It has hit it well. Hashim Amla. They wanted him to drive. And he did. Well timed by Hashim Amla. Under 100 now that South Africa need. S straight drive. Was in the air for a little bit, but no real chance. Good shot again. Excellent timing by Hashim Amla. Yeah, I think that's not going to be easy. If they're all playing and they're all bowling well, competition for positions will be, uh, will be very tough indeed. It's a nice problem to have. This is a very good shot. Good weight transfer through the ball. Shot. Again, you see, he gave him the width and the length, and he played a very nice shot. But there have been too many balls like that. After some good cricket by West Indies, I think the bowling performance has been erratic. See. That's two boundaries, that's a good shot. But everything's going swimmingly well for South Africa, 108 for one. It's a good stroke. Kept the blade of the bat on the ball for a beautiful amount of time. Excellent shot. Quality shot. The timing, the placement, didn't try to whack it. I just saw the straightness of the bat just come through with lovely timing. Well, they're just picking them off easy. Every bowler's going for over fives and over. It's cleared mid on. Has he got enough on it? Yes, he has. So Amla also wants to get in on the act. Thirty-six from forty-six balls, as you remember. Well, that's four. That's right out there and in the slot. Well, you see the leg spinner Lewis has got some rough to bowl into, but he just tosses it up wide, very wide, and just gives you lots of room to just throw the bat, and that's what he does. He thinks if I hit this nice and clean, it'll clear the fielders. I mean, it looks like a prep school leg spinner. I'm sorry, there's no zip in the bowling. Quite... Oh. Has he caught that? Has he caught that? Going to his right. There was a bobble or two. Wonderful work from Chris Gale. Well, it went in and then went out of his hand, I think. Yep, I thought it did. Oh, <laughs> Oh, an acrobat. Well done, lad. Terrific. Yes. Well done. I thought he dropped it, but he dropped it twice and then caught it. Yeah, good effort. Now yeah, you give credit where it's due. It's out. That's all that matters for West Indies. 1 of 40 for 2, Amla for 37. Chuck Cullis joins the fray at 140 for 2. 44. 45 more runs required at just over three runs and over for South Africa to finish this test match today. Nicely played. He waited to play it late. Huge effort, very good effort. But in the end, only succeeded in palming it over because of his weight and his direction, Green Bravo. Four more to Smith. Mm -hmm. 
got some room and Dwayne Bravo did all he could there but just wasn't able to pull it back oh what a catch what a catch he stood there Graham Smith and it's Chris Gale once again at first slip it's that big right hand dives to his right it was going between keeper and first slip and he plucked it out the air fabulous stuff well it seems to be going to the right hand for Chris Gale the uninjured one and another quality catch at first slip applause for Graham Smith 85 in quick times won the game for South Africa 152 for three one hundred and fifty two for three South Africa 33 more runs to win they've just lost their skipper Graham Smith who played absolutely magnificently 85 he got off 79 deliveries nervous nervous no chance have a look at this catch it's in ultra motion as well this is how a top class slipper operates it's going away to his right had to go a long way oh yes oh goodness me what a shot Jacques Cullis at his finest it's a brilliant shot over cover well this is coming from a way back Powell and Callis had a little altercation when Powell was batting Callis gave him some short stuff and gave him some lip and Jacques Callis has retaliated didn't just back away came down the track had every intention of hitting this in the air no ball called and that's a beautiful cover drive from Ashwell Prince it was out there inviting the drive out the rough and he got to it and hit it sweetly clearly over but a nice shot from Ashwell Prince Callis is now getting impatient extraordinary well it's a man in good touch I mean he's hardly ever had a lean spell in his career and he's just dismissive of this well, goodish length ball, certainly a bit leg side ish. And he just manufactured a heave hole through the leg side, doesn't he? Prince this time pulls it away for four. Just three to win now. 182 for three. Hits it on the swivel. Good shot. Haven't seen many batsmen get out to the short ball on this particular pitch. No, well, I said <laughs> all along. It. I said all along. I think it's the easiest ball to hit because the ball sits up when they bang it in. It just sits up. It doesn't rush through quite so much. Oh, well, Cullis try and finish it with one blow. It's a long off in. He won't want to get out, obviously. It's not much fun getting out at this stage of the game. Long on's up, or mid on's up, rather. Fairly orthodox.
That's it. Authentic stroke from a master player. And South Africa level the series at one each. Palace, a very happy man, as is the rest of the South African side. Spare a thought, especially for Chris Gale. Put in a brave show in the last 24 hours. Batted with a torn hamstring and a broken thumb. Still came out to stand at slip and lead his team. Caught two good catches. You said earlier in commentary, Geoffrey, that invariably there'll be a time in a test match where it goes wrong for one team or the other and they'll lose the test match through that time. When was it for the West Indies? Batting second. Their second innings batting was pretty poor. I mean, Gale came in and thrashed a few, Chanderpaul hung around and he made the total look better than it was, but some of the batting by the other people was uh, pretty ordinary to poor. And I think that's their biggest problem. Whatever problems they've got, lack of a quality spinner, etc. Maybe the bowling at times could be a little more disciplined. They just don't make enough runs consistently. They had one good innings in Port Elizabeth and it won the test match for them, making 400. I think in the end, it was a good contest, competitive. A lot of areas were good where either side could have won. And in the end, South Africa wore them down. That second innings by West Indies, there were only a few flourishes at the end by Chander, Paul and Gale because they were always up against it. South Africa bowled very well the second innings to the West Indians, and then they batted very well to knock them off, and they just wore them down. They're the better side, there's no doubt at all. Man for man, South Africa are a better side, and they obviously didn't play too well in Port Elizabeth. West Indies played above themselves, and so it was a good test match for West Indies, but I think this one has just brought it back to reality for West Indies, that they've got a lot of issues in the batting that they've got to sort out. Thank you very much, Jeff, for your thoughts and your thoughts throughout the four days. As you pointed out, it's another four-day test match. And South Africa would be pleased to have got it over with, with a bad forecast tomorrow morning. 186 for three, asked uh, to get 185. They took the uh, extra half hour in order to knock off the runs. A very aggressive inning set up. That was set up by Graham Smith, who played a very aggressive innings of 85 and a blistering start along with A.B. de Villiers and uh, got themselves into a situation where they could win today. The West Indies bowlers uh, got thrashed to start with. Their heads went down a little bit. Couple of wickets for Lewis, but he doesn't look a class act. And Bravo taking the other one. So. That's the match situation. The West Indies uh, won the toss, batted first on a slow pitch with a slow, slow outfield. They struggled to 243. South Africa were in trouble in the first inning, saved by Prince and Boucher to get to 321.